Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at the Orient Express train. This is from Lego Ideas. It's a highly anticipated set from fans, so let's get into it. First off, the set number is 21344. It has 2,540 pieces. It'll go on sale December 1st of 2023, and it will retail for a whopping $300. Now, if you're a longtime LEGO fan, you probably remember the Emerald Knight. Released in 2009, this is one of the most coveted LEGO trains ever made and goes for about $600 on the aftermarket today. So the Orient Express has a lot of pressure riding on it, quite literally, in order to deliver. For those of you unfamiliar, the Orient Express actually is a real train that you can ride yourself, though it's pretty expensive. It's a luxury train that goes to multiple cities throughout Europe. Now, I have to say I was quite shocked to see how much a ticket on this train costs. They range all the way from 3,500 euros all the way up to a whopping 58,000 euros for a five-day train ride. Pretty insane. Now, I know some of you are wondering if this set is motor compatible with the powered up system that LEGO offers. No, it is not. It's only track compatible. You'll have to use third party options if you want to motorize this train. Moving on to the building experience, I was a little confused that you start off building the tracks first instead of last. I would think you would start off with the locomotive, but that's actually the last thing that you build for this set. A little bit wonky and kind of threw me off, but maybe that's just me. Now, while this train has quite a few printed pieces, there's also a significant amount of stickers, more than I was expecting for a quote unquote premium Lego train set. And speaking of the sticker sheet, there's actually an inherent issue. Lego had to send me a replacement sticker sheet on the right is the correct sticker sheet on the left is the incorrect one that comes with the first wave of sets so if you're buying this set day one on december 1st you're going to have to contact lego customer service to get the correct sticker sheet as a replacement after building the set, I have to say it is a very nice Lego train. It is a premium looking train, but it's not without its faults. In fact, this is probably one of the more disappointing sets of 2023, which is unfortunate because this is one of the last sets to be released this year, and I thought Lego would be going off with a bang. The first notable change Lego made when making the Orient Express here is doing dark blue instead of dark green from the original fan submission. I don't know how I feel about it. The dark blue doesn't look bad, but I definitely would have preferred the dark green. Now, in terms of minifigures, there is eight included in this set, four of which are guests or passengers that you can put in various rooms that I'll be showing in just a second. And the other four characters included are the staff and engineers that are required to operate the train properly. You even have a waitress as well as the conductor. At 46 inches long, the Orient Express is almost the exact same length as the Hogwarts Express. That's a $500 set that I'll be comparing to shortly. First, we'll take a look at the locomotive. First off, you might notice that there is a combination of both stickers and printed pieces. On top of that, you might notice that there is a brand new coupling rod piece that is brand new and exclusive to this set as I'm making this review. Now, I'm sure this will pop up in future trains, but for now, it is an exclusive part, which is kind of cool for train fans. I was also fairly impressed with the techniques being utilized here to make sure that this locomotive properly works on the normal Lego track system. Now looking towards the top of the train, you will see the whistle and funnel, both of which are in new colors, especially this piece right here in dark blue, which is a Lego Minions headpiece. Great parts usage from the Lego team. Inside the locomotive has some nice little details and you can fit one minifigure like the conductor. Next, we have the coal cart. Now, this is actually fairly empty on the inside, so if you were to motorize this train while it won't work with the powered up system, say you use a third party train motor, well, this is where you could probably put the battery bank inside here doing some slight modifications. On the top side, you'll find, you guessed it, some coal. Now, that part will also open up if you want to. There's some minor details here and there, but relatively speaking, this is a simple build. There's also room for one minifigure, and the way that you connect both the coal cart as well as the locomotive is simply by ball joints. Next, we move on to the passenger cars where you'll find all the different luxury features. But before looking at that, let's take a look at the exterior. On the outside, you'll find lots of different printed pieces. I believe over eight here. There is a few stickers on the doors, but other than that, I was fairly impressed to see so many unique prints. Opening the top up will reveal a full interior that is as decorated as you can do. First off, with this train cart, you'll find that there is a full bathroom with a toilet, sink, and even a toilet paper holder as well. Love those little details. 
I assume this section has to be the grand suite. You'll find a desk as well as a sofa, a full size bed, and there's even this really cool three by three tile with a sticker on it, but the sticker is reflective and is actually a nice hallmark to what you see on the real Orient Express with this mirror. I'm glad Lego recreated because it looks really cool. Opposite to the suite is a bedroom with two beds as well as a desk and sink that you'll find. Now this is a pretty tight space, but still they made it work in Lego form. On each end of the car, the roof is not removable, but if you peek in through the doors, you'll see some inlaid wood panels. Unfortunately, these are stickers. I really wish they were printed instead, but they still are really cool. Taking a look underneath, you'll see that there's some nice details here, as well as the fact that the rail wheels do indeed spin, again, to adhere to make sure that they work on the LEGO track system. Moving on to the next cart, you'll see that this is pretty much identical looking to the other one. It's when you remove the roof that you see it is a completely different interior. Representing the dining cart, you'll see two full tables with chairs on either side, a nice little lamp, some dishes, some cups, and there's even a bar, and I absolutely love that 4x4 sticker on the back there. That is supposed to represent a cut glass mirror behind the bar. For those of you wondering, LEGO is utilizing this new bracket element that I believe is the first time this is being utilized in a set. Maybe it's in a few others, I'm not sure. But that's how they're achieving these one stud wide windows. Even though LEGO is utilizing one stud wide windows, it still is a pretty tight space within the cart. On the back side, you'll find more inlaid wood panels and 2x6 tile form, as well as some other details that you can see here including even more wood panels. Lastly, Lego included a section of railroad tracks. On one end, you have a two by two trans clear brick to adhere one of the passenger cars to. Now, when you pick up the tracks with the train on them, which some people would do to you know, display the set on maybe a shelf, you'll see that the stability of those train tracks is abysmal. I cannot believe this passed LEGO's quality standards. LEGO should have easily added some Technic bricks to fix this issue, but regardless, this is how it is. Next, I wanna compare some other trains. First off, we have the $130 playset version of the Hogwarts Express, which looks pretty small comparative to the Orient Express, and rightfully so, there's a $170 difference between the two sets. But but what about the collector's edition of the Hogwarts Express? At $500, it is obviously significantly more expensive and it is significantly bigger. It doesn't fit on the normal Lego tracks, which was a huge complaint of mine when I reviewed that set last year. But I am surprised to see that both the Orient Express and the Hogwarts Express Collector's Edition are about the same length, given though that there is one less passenger car for the Hogwarts Express comparative to the Orient Express. So wrapping things up, I think the Orient Express is a little bit disappointing. While I think there's some major quality issues with this railroad track, and I still am shocked that this got past LEGO's quality standards, so truthfully, I am underwhelmed and disappointed with the Orient Express. On top of the fact that this set, to me, feels way overpriced, it should have been at max $250, $200 is what it should have been aiming for, this set is just far too expensive for what you're getting with the quality issues, with the differences from the original fan model, I just can't recommend this one.